Good morning, Bruce. You doing all right, buddy? <laughs> Let's get that down on you, eh? Well, Bruce, he wants a bit of a treat, don't you, mate? Come on, bud. Okay. How cute are they? Here, Tony. And a good morning to you too. The time is currently 3 a.m. in the morning. Yes, that is right, 3 a.m. in the morning. 2 a.m. get up this morning. Very early one indeed. And there stands the nemesis this morning. Already nice and cleaned over the weekend for me. Looking very pretty today, nemesis. I must say so myself. And the reason why I'm starting so early this morning is because I am going down to London pretty much central london well i'd say it's central london anyway because it's right by the o2 arena so for me that is central enough but first thing what i need to do is make sure the loaders are strapped down and secured vehicle checks are all done truck is secured to the trailer everything's all secured inside it's now time to hit the road and yes it's t-shirt weather finally nearly four o'clock in the morning and it's roasting I kind of say roasting, but I mean, it's warm. In total, to get to the first destination, it's 219 miles. And I'm looking at about five hours and probably five and a half with traffic included. Yeah, that's gonna be a long drive today. The sat nav is showing at nine o'clock to get there. However, it needs to take a 45 minute break. So I'm looking at about quarter to 10, the earliest of getting there. time is now 10 past 8 and I've just taken a break over on the M11 services right opposite Stansted Airport and I've got quite a good view of actually of all the planes taking off so it's not a bad little place to sit for an hour. And there's another plane just taking off for somebody going on their holidays. It's now just coming up to 25 past 9 at the moment. I've still got 25 miles to go. According to my sat nav, Mr. Tom Tom, he's saying I'm due to get there in 30 minutes. However, <laughs> however, Google Maps, which I've got linked up to my computer, the computer on the truck, I can't remember think what it's called then, the L LCD screen that you have anyway, I've got the Google Maps on that one. So I've got two sat navs running, just keep you updated with the traffic and whatnot. Because going into London can be quite bad, really, can't it? At most times, this is saying 51 minutes. So yeah, it's a little bit of a difference there on story. Well, it's going to be pretty heavy. So the way I'm going into London at the moment is the M11 straight down, and then I'm joining on to. Let's uh, scroll down. It's the M11, then joining the A13, and then going down towards the A102, underneath the tunnel where the Millennium Dome is, which is now, I think it's like the O2 Arena, or whatever it's called these days. I can't really keep up with time, to be honest with you. And then it's about half a mile from there on some industry estate. I'm hoping it's an industry estate, because the business, name that I'm delivering to, it's quite a big firm, so it shouldn't really be a little tiny unit. So hopefully delivery space should be okay for it. I've given work a little bit of heads up as well, but I'm running late due to the traffic, etc. trying to get into London. Not much I can really do really, unless I started at 2 a.m. instead of three. So it's gonna be a struggle getting there for nine o'clock, or half nine anyway, unfortunately. And then job number two is going to be in Wembley. So it's pretty much on the other side of Greater London. So that's gonna be fun. 
<laughs> Got me there before three o'clock though, or three thirty, I think it is. That's going to be 10 pallets getting took off for that one. So it should be okay getting there because I've got six hours between now and then anyway. Jesus! Don't know if that car's picked. The camera picked up that car then. That Toyota just squared from the far left lane, right in between, and back again, and I'll back onto the left lane. What is going on? That's London for you. Drown like a bloody nutter. I'm eight miles now away from the destination and I'm just coming up to somewhere called Isle of Dogs on the A13 on the roundabout. Yeah, this has got to be the closest that I've drove to London city centre and the HGV before. So far it's been alright. I don't fancy getting towards like Trafalgar Square and stuff. Yeah, forget that for a laugh. So hats off to anybody that does drive around there for a living. I can imagine that being an absolute nightmare. Might be getting the first look of central London now. Yeah, there we go. Looks quite nice, actually. Yeah, looks quite nice, though. It's not as big as you think, though, is it, London? It's just when you compare it to somewhere like New York and stuff, no, some of the height of the buildings. It feels a lot bigger when you're walking around though, doesn't it, as a tourist? Opposed to driving around. I think this is the first time I've actually drove in London ever, even in a car. I don't think I've come through London in a car before. So, let's see if we can get into this lane. It's dead. Try and keep myself on the left hand side where possible. Just so I've got a good view of the blind spots. Yeah, so I'm going through, I think it's the 102 tunnel, wasn't it? South. Makes sense. Uh, it's not bus lane, is it, this one? No. Yeah, 102, that's right on the set-nav. Got a big HSBC building there behind the trees on the left. Along with some of the others. Just got to keep my wits with me. Make sure I'm keeping an eye on all the mirrors. Make sure there's nobody dodgy driving. <laughs> Gets too close to me. And then for the road signs and everything where we need to go, let's make sure I'm in the right lane because I don't want to be cutting across last minute or anywhere. And just keep it a little bit wide. And oh god, didn't expect that to be there like that. Ah, what's the height? I mean it would have been better if it said like a height a little bit further down instead of right as you come into the tunnel. <laughs> Well, there's other trucks coming down here, so that's a good sign. Uh, through the tunnel we go. Uh, I think it's about a mile long, this tunnel, is it? And if you remember correctly, I remember coming down here on a bus when I was a kid. I think it pops up and you got the, what used to be the Millennium Dome 
left hand side, I think it might be like the other two arena now. I've been to London a few times as a tourist, walking around, but we've got the train down when it is me and Leanne, and me and my ex-partner, about 10 years ago, came down for a concert at the, the old tour arena. Um, drove down and then it was like on just on the outskirts in the middle got the tram or the underground substations to the more of the central lines where you need to go It's not too bad so far. It's been all right Going to sat nav um, underneath the O2 actually at the moment shot of the O2 arena on the camera looks like I can't see it no I can't see it oh it's behind me <laughs> I can see it in the mirrors unfortunately you guys can't see it <laughs> now the question is how am I going to get to Wembley from over here What's going to be the best way? Cut straight through the centre or jump down onto the M25 and then cut all the way around because I might go back towards Dartford, jump on the M25 ring road and then go from there. Mm, don't know. Not too sure yet. I'll do the planning for that shortly. Traffic on the other side of the road, however, getting into London Centre is pretty heavy, isn't it? I've backed up, it might take me about an hour to get back through the tunnel. Right back on myself right now. So maybe going down might be the best option. Right, I need to take a left at these lights. Myself plenty of room. I'm just going right up to the sides. A good turn on the trailer then. I've got to admit though, I'm really surprised on how quiet the roads actually are around here. I was expecting to be loads of traffic, loads of nutters driving around. <laughs> well, it's generally really quiet. I'm not complaining at that. I'm happy with that, being honest with you. So I'm looking for a place called Stone Lake Industry Park. I need to keep a lookout for that one. So we've got a retail park here. Okay, I think this is Stone Lake Retail Park. Uh, I think I've seen a sign a second ago with the trucks on. Satnav says it's here where we are now. Maybe is it left here? Yeah, I can see the business that I'm delivering to. So that's a good sign. All right, I've got to try and locate it now, which is probably going to be a headache. Because so after delivering the Hadfield, which is North London, and Wembley as well, a lot of the places that you do deliver to are industry estates. They're not exactly truck friendly, unfortunately. There was signposted down there. I don't really want to go too much further down because it looks like it's coming towards a dead end. <laughs> I mean, is it down there? Yep, there it is. It's 
straight in front of me. Nice. A second sign probably would have been helpful though to say that no, it's a little bit further down left hand side. But here we are. Nice big loading bay. Fantastic. Nice big dairy to turn around. I love it. Don't mind it when it's like this. I really don't. Let's get spin around and reversed in. And ideally, I want the passenger wheels just to be on that marking which splits the concrete. Just so there's plenty of space then for the forklift driver to unload both sides. Turns out the sat nav is saying to go this way round, which is yeah, it's a little bit of a long way around, really, isn't it? I thought I would be able to cut through his, like top bit or something, but because a lot of restrictions, you can't get back across where the River Thames is. I need to come this way, but it's just going to be too much aggro, isn't it? Getting through a little place with restrictions of a truck. So I've got to come down, jump onto the M25, cut across, back on myself, and then I think that's the four. Oh, six maybe, is it? Let's have a quick check, zoom in. Down on this north circle of road anyway. So yeah, quite a bit of a, little bit of a drive around that, isn't it? 46 miles it is. But instead of driving all the way around, 49 miles, I thought, thanks to Eric, by the way, so cheers, Eric, for this idea. Woolwich, or wherever it is that I'm at, is it Woolwich? Woolwich? have its very own ferry port which goes from South Woolwich to North Woolwich so I'm taking advantage of this so this is the first time I've ever been on a ferry in a HGV and yeah I think it's quite cool this <laughs> And it's a free service as well. I hope it's a free service anyway, because it did read it online before making the commitment to come down here. I'll let you know shortly if it is or not. <laughs> okay, here we go. I was hoping to be the first one on, not the last. Either way, it's pretty exciting. Oh god, it's very narrow though. I have to be careful on the on the passenger side. Oh my word, this is really narrow. Unfortunately, what seemed quite a really good idea, <laughs> but a great view anyway, I thought, yeah, it'd be great this. I'll be able to sail across, have a good view of London, it'd be dead nice and that like, bear in mind it is very quick and there's no issues with it on that side of things. However, it's not quite the view I was expecting, <laughs> if I'm being honest with you. I suppose I got a little bit of a view there. <laughs> and a little bit behind as well. It's a shame you can't get out and have a walk around. Ah well, it beats driving all the way around at least, doesn't it? There it is on my little sat nav screen. And we've just gone from this side right across to the north side. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty cool. Quite enjoyed that. Shame I didn't get much to see though. <laughs> Definitely beats driving all the way around. Oh, 
Look at the view over there though, that's nice. I never knew that was a thing though until Eric said last night, honestly. Right then, which way am I going? I think it's the right turn. I've just got to follow the rest of the trucks, to be honest. Uh, bit of bat luck with the traffic on her. Quite a tight one here on the right turn. So we're doing a nice tight turn like this. We need to make sure I go pretty much into the middle of the road. And then hard right turn now. Honestly, this is one thing I love about doing driving. You get to see some places that you never would do normally. I'd never come to this part of London, would you, as a tourist? Around here, out the way. It's like its own little island as well, isn't it? This housing estate on the left-hand side. And it's just on the outskirts of, I think it's London Central Airport. big part though but looking at the sat nav though there's literally water surrounding this whole estate <laughs> now I'm going over a little bridge here in a second business of some sort. I don't have a clue whereabouts I am though, that's for sure. Oh my god, got an airplane right above me head. Oh my god, this bridge is right on the end of the runway. That is so cool. Oh, I'm like a little kid. <laughs> oh, it's like a big kid. Going off the sat nav, it looks like I'm pretty much going to be staying on this road now. The ring road goes on the inner M25. And it just goes all the way around to Wembley and around the rest of London, to be honest. So it should be quite a nice, easy one. Busy though with traffic, but straightforward road. It's got to be 21 miles as well until I get to my location. I see that every day, big bus getting towed. Right, so I need to be in the right and two lanes. So I'm just going to move over to the middle lane. It's like this all the way around. Yeah, it's been a nice easy day, a lot easier than I thought it would have been driving to and from London. Because coming down, the traffic was really, really quiet, wasn't it? The roads, like, eerily quiet for London. Especially when I come out of the tunnel on the other side, the roads were deserted. And even coming down here now, it's just nice and clear, which is good. I don't know whether it's because the kids are off school or anything, but saying that, it's quarter past 11 at the moment, so regardless if the kids are in school or not, it wouldn't really make much of a difference, would it? I don't think the camera could pick it up, but just over the houses on the right hand side is the big Wembley Stadium. So I've gone from the O2 Arena to the Wembley Stadium today and took a ferry across the Thames. <laughs> oh, what a crazy day. You forget how big London actually is though when you're driving around it from one side to the other side. It's quite a big uh, circumference, isn't it? What a mileage. 
I'm 1.5 miles away at the moment from destination. And it's eight pallets getting dropped off. I've not checked on Google Maps though what it's like for getting unloaded and stuff when I get here. So maybe when I get the opportunity to pull over somewhere safely, I might be able to do that. Actually, be coming off the junction which goes towards the Wembley Stadium. I mean, there's a lot of cranes over there, I can see, and it is a bit of construction material I've got. I think it's uh, something to do with drainage and stuff. So, who knows? down here then following it around left at a roundabout yep it's going towards Wembley Amazon tribe coming out. <laughs> There's loads of them. Uh, I'm just trying to push my way forward a little bit. There you go. I'll give a truck driver seeing me. Let me out. Cheers, mate. Which way am I going over here then? Still three quarters of a mile away. We're going towards Wembley at least. I don't know where I'm going to be staying tonight because I'm not too sure what they got planned after this, whether I'm going to make myself far north as I can. No, I'm doing a collection around this area to take back up north with me. I'll find out very shortly. Give the office call as soon as I leave here. It might be a building, Sam, not too sure. Because it's contractors. Uh, PJ Carries. Oh, here we go. Perfect. This is the place here now, perfect. Uh, I'll park up here and then I'll get access to the site. That was quite handy. That's the second job done now around London. And we're just round corner from Wembley as you've seen. I'm 200 miles away from the yard and it is four hours driving to get back. 
I've got two hours and seven minutes and then I can extend it for one hour. So I've got three hours and seven minutes in total. So I can't make it back tonight, unfortunately. Come with this, I just had to pull over, get a nice little picture for the thumbnail and our Swimbley Stadium, everybody. I couldn't resist. I had to have a little tour. This is right on the doorstep. It's rude not to, isn't it? Just imagine living in these apartments right here in front of you. You can literally see into the stadium on the top floor ones. Now, I don't know if I'm going the right direction because a lot of trucks are going this way. I think it is a big ring road. So I can go around in circles. Yeah, it's been quite a good day today, really interesting. I feel like I've had a little tour of London. <laughs> if you have enjoyed it as well, don't forget to like, comment, and always subscribe to the channel if you are new. I really do appreciate it, so thank you very much. Oh, mate, might as well cross over. Make sure nobody else wants to jump out in front of me whilst I'm here. A lot of construction work going on around here as well, isn't there? Buildings are just getting thrown up everywhere, aren't they, at the moment? Let's see how far north I can get back anyway towards the depot. I'm going to be going up the M40. I think that's probably going to be the best direction to go. I thought it was a one-way system around here. I think it is now. I think, don't think it used to be a one-way system. Sat nav is saying it's a one-way. But you got an arrow marking on the floor which says otherwise. So this is the type of traffic I was expecting throughout the whole day to be honest with you, knowing that I was coming to London. Bumper to bumper, trying to get out on the A406 so I could join up to the M40, I do believe it is. And then go straight up to the M42, M6, as much as we can. I don't think there's going to be much so tonight. Three hours driving left, that's with an hour extended as well. the countryside any day of the week that's what I say I'm going to miss the Tesla I forgot you can make your own rules if you drive a Tesla parked on top of the Vanguard self-storage place. I'm sure it's Vanguard that I've seen last time I was in London and it looked like there was a jet hanging in the middle like the middle of the lobby area. Looked pretty cool. Uh, I think I need to get into the middle lane in a minute. Three lanes going straight ahead. No, oh, straight ahead for now, it's alright. Stay here then. Second break started. After I finished taking my second break at the services, I'm just on the M40 at the moment. I can't remember which services they are, I'll find out in a minute. But I will have an hour and 30 minutes left on my driving for the rest of the day. I'm still three hours away from home so I might be able to get just below Birmingham possibly but right now a coffee and a little walk is much needed just so I can get my legs stretched out get a bit of fresh air wake myself up a little bit more starting to feel a little bit fatigued that moment from being honest with you so a 45 minute break is welcome um like I say coffee 
fresh air does your wonders so if you ever feel a little bit tired or drowsy just take a break uh, pull over have a coffee stretch legs a bit of fresh air feel wonderful afterwards i think it's called stoke liner services on the m40 quite good services i've been here once before um quite quiet place as well security is not like fenced off or anything so i probably wouldn't come here if i've got valuable goods on me but empty trailer definitely fine a little bit of a change of plan because i started at three o'clock and i was up at 2 a.m this morning oh, so early <laughs> it was originally i wanted to try and get to stafford services because i quite like them services but however because of traffic building up now at birmingham it's saying on google maps i'm going to be getting there in about an hour and 10 or maybe an hour i've got one hour left driving time so i thought instead of risking it and then getting stuck somewhere i don't like like hilton park services i'm going to pull over at hopwood services on the m42 just south of birmingham and the real nice services these ones so i thought i'll stay here nice services big parking facility got good food outlets I might as well stay here, get up tomorrow. I spoke to Mike in the office. I don't actually have to be back at the yard until like nine, 10 o'clock in the morning because I've got a late collection. So bonus. So my plan is stay here, get up at 5.30, do my checks, have a wash, etc. Be on the road at about between six and quarter past six. Get to Warrington Yard for about eight o'clock. So then gives me enough time for traffic and then do the collection that I need to do tomorrow. Somebody did ask me in the comments about my nighttime routine when I stay out on the trucks, what I normally do. Um, first thing I do is get the bed set up, as you can see right here. I do normally keep this bottom bed sheet on. This is full time on. And that is mainly because I'm the only person who uses this truck now. So we've moved half of our fleet over to the hub. This unit only gets used by myself, so I can keep the bottom sheet on, it's perfectly fine. My pillows, as you can see, are just there. In this cupboard, I'll just open it up. I've got my sleeping bag, so I'll just pull that out, throw it onto the bed when I'm ready to go to sleep. I have an overnight bag, as you can see, just here. And that bag normally consists of um, a towel, toothbrush, toothpaste. So I always keep spare ones in that bag, so I don't have to mess about with the ones at home. Um, aftershaves, etc., and spare pair of clothes for tomorrow. That's pretty good though, finishing for half four and still doing 14 hours. So this is the hot wood services if you've never been here before. Quite nice. And for tonight, we're going to be going chopsticks. The cost for staying here is 35, but you get a 12 pound food voucher, which is pretty good. But with that being said, I do get to claim it back. So I'm not losing out on any money either. And you get food paid for it. So win-win. Because of the food voucher I've got, this has actually cost me 25 pence. So I've got the large caramelized chicken with noodles, spring rolls, and a drink. Not too bad, eh, for 25p. And it'd be rude, wouldn't it? If you wouldn't eat them with a chocolate. And then finally, find myself a nice quiet part of the services and do some editing for tonight's vlog. So here's a little bit of behind the scenes for it. Got the volume mixers up here with all the different effects as well, if you want to do transitions. These are all the little individual clips, and that's what's been played at the current time. Pretty easy once you get used to it though. Once the vlog's done and uploaded, I'm just gonna put my feet up, watch a bit of Shogun, which is on Disney at the moment. Really, really good. Japanese history, if you like that, worth it. If you'd like Game of Thrones, I would recommend watching Shogun as well. Really, really good, really interesting. So for the rest of the night, what I'm gonna do is put my feet up, chill out, upload the vlog, and then that's me done. Bedtime. As you can see, I am absolutely shattered at the moment. So the bed is calling me <laughs> very, very soon. If you did enjoy the vlog, don't forget that like, comment, subscribe as always, and I really do appreciate everybody that watches it. So thank you very much, and I'll see you again next time tomorrow night, 7pm on YouTube. Take care of yourself, bye for now.